Raisa was originally bred for the pet industry in Texas, and she was um, purchased as a pet by a drug dealer in New York. And then uh, eventually, when she was three years old, she made her way to a rescue facility in Florida. I put together a cocktail based on her weight, um, and then used some type of projectile to dart her, typically. So we do everything we can while they're sedated. So blood work, x-rays, any dental work if needed. It's kind of a deformed nail that it's not growing into her pad, which is good, but it can be uncomfortable because she's like walking on this right here. After that, we uh, continued with the dental x-rays and we found a uh, bad tooth, uh, something called a resorbing lesion, which basically means the tooth is starting to kind of resorb into normal bone. That can be uh, painful. So I performed uh, a dental extraction. The very first picture of me as a baby, there's a cat in the cradle with me. So I think I was just imprinted on very young that these are my fellow soulmates in life and they deserve our protection. When I go to a rescue and I see a cat that's living in a space half the size of this hospital with two tigers, and they're not cleaned and there's poop everywhere and they haven't been fed in weeks sometimes and there isn't anything that lawmakers can do about that. These people don't even get a fine half the time. The primary driver of abuse of big cats is that people will pay to have their pictures made with a cub. They can only use them for a few weeks for that, and then they get too big, and then those people are dumping them into private hands as pets.